past trauma does not have to define us or keep us from our purpose. I am so happy to share this conversation with Simone with you. I love to hear about how she can help people and how she's used her mental health struggles through postpartum depression to grow into what she was meant to do and help people grow their businesses. Hello and welcome to this podcast conversation of the Epic Kate Show. It's an absolutely beautiful journey. And when I, you know, can accompany somebody on that journey, it's like, oh, okay, I understand now why I'm here, you know? I understand now um, this thing called life. So I hope that you will enjoy this conversation. You will stick around to the end. You will give this video a like at some point because I know you're gonna like it. She's an awesome lady. And yes, let's get into it. Hello, Simone, and welcome to the Epic Kate Show. Thank you, Katie. Thank, oh, or do you prefer Katie or Kate? I don't care. Both are fine. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, thank you for having me. I'm so thankful for the chance to talk to you. It was really cool to connect a few days ago. And mm-hmm. like, I was so impacted by your video that you made that's not, not up anymore, which I totally understand why that you made this video yeah. so touching and mm-hmm. so raw about your yeah. postpartum journey. And postpartum journey. wow. Mm-hmm. So. I just have this real passion inside to give, to to learn about these really hard things that so many people would have no clue of. And and just kind of open people's worlds to, to hear, not only hear the story, but, you know, hear how they can be aware of how they can help others, what they can look out for, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, I will, I will let you take it away. (laughs) Well, I'm Simone, and currently I am what is called a mindset coach. And so I help women sort of uh, heal difficult times in their in their lives with the purpose of helping them to later on um, support themselves, build the, the business that they want, support their families, whatever that looks like for each person. And the video... Um, that was just part of it. I've been through so many evolutional phases that I, um, you know, the very first thing that was really a trigger in my life for all the change was the postpartum video that are going through postpartum depression and anxiety. Because, um, so much was still hidden deep within me of fear of rejection of you know all all of that like traumatic and difficult stuff that we go through as children uh, or young adults or even even in adulthood and the catalyst for all the change that went on in my life was having my son and the postpartum depression that happened afterwards So what did that postpartum depression like manifest? How did that manifest in your life? Um, I wasn't expecting it at all. Now I had always had like a little bit of anxiety or depression, you know? Um, But the hormone change that I went through when I had my son, it, it was just like a ton of bricks. Uh, my mind was constantly aware and it was exhausting because I would be watching him, making sure he was breathing, the anxiety levels, making sure that, you know, there was no, nothing that could harm him around him. Um, making sure he was getting enough to eat, making sure that everything, you know, in his little environment was perfect. So my mind would not be quiet. Mm. Mm. And then couple that with the physical difficulties that we go through in pregnancy and afterward when during birth and all that. Wow. Um, yeah. And was there other things happening that was like, how do I express it? Like, 
when you're going through something that's really taxing physically and mentally, it brings up thing pre-existing problems, like it exacerbates them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And in, in a way it's like you go through it and it sucks so bad because you really just don't know who you are anymore. Um, but it's also this beautiful and I say beautiful, but it sucks. <laughs> this beautiful moment that you have the opportunity to say, oh, hey, that's still there. Or, and oh, hey, you know, that there's something within me that still needs to be healed. Mm. As, mm, as painful as it is, you know? Yeah, the whole, mm. you can't fix a problem until you acknowledge that there is a problem. Yeah. And so much of what we do is like, shut it down, shut it down, shut it down, distract ourselves, whatever, whatever. And um, because it's just painful, you know, painful stuff. And that we go through. A detail that really stuck out to me about your story was the fact that that anxiety manifested into psychosis what was it that did. like? Well, I'll tell you the the physical, so like, I guess physical, psychological symptoms. Yeah. First was uh, psychosis. However, I gave it that name. Since then, the the, psych- the psychiatrist corrected me. She said it's not, it wasn't that. So, but I'll tell you what it was in a second. And then also self-harm. Yeah. So you can't really see it on the video because they're quite faint, but um, self-harm, yeah. It's so good that um, it's healing. What'd you say? I said, it's so good that it's healing. Yeah, I mean, in person you can really see it, but you know, on camera. Mm. It was like the, the self-harm was a way to like have control. The self-harm for me And I want to preface this by saying that um, this is not the answer. No. And I regret it 100%. Um, But the self-harm to me was uh, feeling, being able to feel. Because for so long, I had been shutting out all my emotions. And so it was like, I'm alive. I can I feel that I'm alive in this moment. And then of course in your brain you get stuff going on, you know, like hormones are released. And then you reach a point, uh, you know, it feels good in the moment, but it's 100 percent for people watching, not good, not the way. Mm. And psychosis, which um I can only speak to my experience because I'm obviously not a licensed psychiatrist or psychologist or anything, but um, to me, it was a voice um, in my head that was telling me uh, that I was going to be, that I was going to die and that my baby was going to die and then I didn't deserve to live. Yeah. An exterior voice. Not a voice, not like, oh, what's for dinner today? You know. And I didn't visually see it, but like my imagination could tell that it was there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Hands down the scariest thing I've ever gone through. Cause you just it's your mind working against you because you reached a point of, you know, you can't go any further. Wow. And what was the point when you reached out to your husband and said, I need help? Yeah. How long did it take? About two months, I think. Two months of living with a voice, an external voice telling you these horrible things. Yeah. Well, you know what? It actually, that, that moment when I started hearing the voice, um, is the moment when I told him, but bef- it like, cause I was like, this ain't normal. <laughs> but before that, you know, the inside, the constant anxiety, the constant worry, just like, 
my brain just taking up all of my energy to make sure that everything, you know, uh, that baby was, you know, is he breathing? Is he eating? Is he, you know, just all consuming. So your, your brain really just did not let you rest. You probably hardly slept in that time. Huh? Yeah. Well, and I'm such a sleep, like a, what would you call it? Like a sleepy person. <laughs> so eventually I would just crash, you know? Um, but yeah, it was hard. Well, and also breastfeeding. I mean, I don't know. Did you have that experience? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I tandem nursed my twins. Yeah. And so you're, I mean, you're up several times a night, especially the twins. Oh yeah. yeah. Those were some rough times when I think how hard it was with always wanting to be a mom, my whole life, knowing that that was something I wanted and it being that hard, I was thinking, Oh my goodness, we need to support other moms and not presume to know anything, but just like, see what we can do when we're out of this fog to help others in that fog. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And the same thing for me, like what I always wanted to be a mom. I always did. And so the fact that it was so just like, I felt so helpless, so lost, Mm -hmm. so wrong. Like I was doing everything wrong at the beginning. Yeah, it hit me also. It hit me hard. I was like, this, what? (laughs) From the outside, you see a mother breastfeeding and you look and you think, oh my gosh, it's the most beautiful thing. And well, how sweet. But what's going on for that mother is pain, tiredness, fatigue, you know, even apart from mental health issues, there's also the physical part of breastfeeding, you know. People can be simplify things so much like the people and it's so, so hard when people struggle through infertility and I wouldn't even begin Mm. to, to know how much that hurts. But when they say, Mm. well, you shouldn't feel that way. You should be happy to have a baby. Like it's not that easy. You can't just turn these mental things off. Yeah. That was another level of guilt I experienced as well. Like there are people who would kill to have a baby, you know, or to be able to go through the experience of uh, have, being pregnant and breastfeeding all that. Um, my mother-in-law, for example, uh, was never able to have children. And so she ended up adopting three children, which, you know, I believe everything happens for a reason, but I felt bad complaining around her or to her because she would have given anything to be able to go through that, you know? Like, why can't we just let people have their things? Like, why can't we just say, shove our own egos down and say, that sucks. Like sometimes that's Mm. what we hear is just, that sucks. Yeah, absolutely. When did things start to get better? Well, I... Yeah, I know. It just took a long time. I'm going to be honest. And um, I would say only recently. Mm. It's been about two years. Yeah. I mean, sometimes maybe what some somebody- pandemic also hit me in that time. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole other can of worms. <laughs> yeah. But so I- that was definitely an influence as well. But somebody watching this maybe just needs to hear that it does eventually get better. Like to hold oh, yes. on. Absolutely. Absolutely. And seek help Mm. is like, if you take nothing away from this today, seek help, verbalize what you're going through. Even if it's not, sorry, like some people are afraid to go to the doctor they don't, or they get there and they forget what they were going to say, or it doesn't have to be a doctor. It can be a friend, a close friend and say, I need help. You know, even to yourself at, at first. I need help. Yeah. And another quick tip that I read, because I've been in groups and stuff online of thousands and thousands of other women, even writing it down. If you go to a doctor's appointment or for your friend, if you can't, if you like can't verbalize it, you know. I want to say to anybody watching this, I have a conversation. I'm going to link it in the description, probably put a card up here if I get around to it. That's with a therapist 
we talk about that, that help is always available. And there's mm. lots of resources there in, in the description mm. to check out about how to, how to look out for help. Good, good. I kind of transition a little bit. I think that, that was so long for me, that was two years ago, you know, <laughs> that now I'm in a different stage of motherhood, which I think you're in a pretty, I don't know, how old are your twins? They're turning five in August. Okay, yeah, they're, but they're young children still, so I have a two-year-old. So, you know, I'm transitioning into, okay, I had a newborn, and now I don't have to be connected to this newborn 24-7, so who am I? <laughs> Apart from mom, who am I as a woman, as a human, mm-hmm. you know? I didn't really have this kind of feeling because I was not so obsessed with my kids. I was mm. really, like so distant from other moms. They're like, my child is the reason I breathe. And I, if I'm away from them for two minutes, I miss them. And I'm like, don't relate. Like <laughs> love them. Sure. But I am happy when they, when it, when we have some space apart and I can see them again. And I've had, I started YouTube when they were still two ish. So yeah. I've had this whole, and and before that I did pen paling as my outlet. So, Uh so from pen paling to YouTube, I've had art, creative outlets, a life aside from being a mom. That's good. Yeah. um, I luckily, you know, I luckily live in a country, I live in Spain that is extremely focused on community and Mm -hmm. family. So uh, I was really like that at first. Like I did not want to even be away from him for um, not even 30 minutes, <laughs> not even, you know what I mean? Um, but luckily I had people in my life, my husband and my uh, in-laws um, mainly, my sister-in-law, my friends that were encouraging me, uh, you know, to just, go get my nails done or just, you know, I'm so thankful for that now. I'm so thankful for that now. Yeah. Because it makes you a better parent when you allow yourself space to take care of yourself, Mm -hmm. makes you a better person, makes you, makes you able to enjoy your kids more, makes you able to enjoy life more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I read this so many times in the postpartum groups where mothers feel like they're just drowning, like they can't, they don't even have 10 seconds to themselves. They're, 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 they're with their children constantly. And, and um, you know, I really feel for people in that situation because yeah. that's hard. It's tangent, but when it's husbands or partners or whatever that are refusing to help, they need to get put into the garbage can because moms need help. and the partners had a part to play to bring humans into the world. Okay. Get, getting off of yeah. my, my, my soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's totally true. And we don't live in a society that's really, well, we're both expats. So I know your situation may be different, but in the United States, I had more of the feeling of everybody's kind of on their own, you know? And, um, I don't know where to tell people to seek out a community, but you need one. You just do. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You need a life. You need a, you need a breather. <laughs> you know? Are you listening? If this is for you, comment I'm listening down below. <laughs> yeah. I got to get better at interacting with the audience as well as with the people I'm having conversations with. <laughs> for for the women who had a real flushed out life before kids, it's like you need a thing to really put your brain into. It's like you didn't lose your brain because you're saying you're so pretty every day. Like, mm. yeah. sorry, that was rambling. I'll probably edit that out. No, it was good. Yeah, you're a whole person. You're a whole person. And for a lot of moms, I think you, before you even have children, Maybe you don't even go there because, you know, and we talked about this last time, but be a good girl, do what you're told, da, 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 da. And it really, um, and if you go through hard things as a child, 
you have two options. Oh, there's something wrong with the world or the, the person that's hurting me or the situation that's bad for me, or it's my fault. And children will tend to lean into it's my fault because then I can control it. I can do something about it. So we're told, be good, be quiet, blah, blah, blah. And we never get to experience fully, who am I as a person? Yeah, especially if yeah. you're in a situation where for, where you have to be the peacemaker, you feel this pressure to keep everyone happy. Yeah, which happens so often. Yeah. I feel, I really feel like we're living in a time, you know, we've got these outlets like social media that different voices are being heard. And I just, I'm like, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. I think it's so wonderful that because of it, so many of the things that were taboo, but necessary, vital to talk about the reality of miscarriage, the reality of postpartum depression, all of these things, people are talking about it more because they have the option to talk about it more, break the yeah. stigma. Yeah. And then like deeply down, I feel so grateful and, you know, just really grateful for the women who came before us, you know, when they would literally just, <laughs> You know, they were burned at the stake for saying that they wanted pain relief during pregnancy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Or the women who were just completely put under during birth and then the baby forcibly taken out, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. I did a bunch of in interesting research into this about, about, about how uh, pain management during birth was, uh, how, how it has a sort of manifested in in throughout history so um yeah and let alone like a mom being able to say even i don't know even 30 40 years ago probably even our parents or grandparents be able to say hey honey i'm tired <laughs> and i really would like to just lay down and read a book can you watch the kids for 10 minutes or you not know? 10 minutes no that is not enough you're <laughs> you're taking the kids for two hours yeah, yeah exactly. like <laughs> be, do not set your expectations so minuscule people watching yeah you just yeah, have but... a legitimate amount of time <laughs> yeah 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 you do you do you're right so yeah I mean I'm deeply grateful for the women that have come before us um or even just the people that have come before us because also it's been you know men who do uh a lot of the scientific research and women, of course, mm -hmm. um, into, you know, what's going on postpartum, you know, and all the scientific research that they, that they do about mental health even, you know. So you wanted to, you had this dream of having a business to, to give you a way to utilize that big, beautiful brain of yours yeah. and, and have a goal. And so, so how much, how, when, when did that come into play of being able to start this mindset coaching thing? Yeah. Well, it started out actually maybe 2015. Um, and uh, I spent so much time, six years, seven years, <laughs> copying what other people were doing online. Somebody says, okay, you can earn this amount of money um, if you do this exact, these exact steps. And so then I would just copy them and do it and copy them and do it, copy them and do it. And um, that never worked. <laughs> nope. I've been in the online space for so long, but it wasn't until um, this year that I finally stepped into who am I authentically and who am I uh, and how can I, you know, use that and show up like that in my business because copying other people, yeah, you can do it for a little while, but then it's just not interesting to you anymore. It's and not you don't have the energy or the will. Yeah. You have to do something that's sustainable for you that you want to do consistently. And so it's an ongoing process, I think, for a, a lot of people, you know, um, always be, being able to be honest in every situation and 
being able to be who you truly are in every situation. And in business is no different than that, you know. So this is your coaching thing is to help people discover their own special sauce and get out of their own heads. Yeah, that's a huge one. And then being able to say, like, like we touched on earlier, oh, well, be the good girl, do what you're told. Um, but then, or, you know, um, fin finish everything on your plate or whatever kind of restrictions, but being able to actually open up again and uh, be, feel safe knowing that I can give uh, my energy to somebody and I can receive money for it. Mm. I don't have to be the good girl that just shuts up and does things and doesn't whine or whatever. You know, I deserve also that energy in return. So to, to discover that not only do they have skills, but they deserve to be paid for those skills. Yeah. Which, you know, isn't, a, a common theme in the patriarchy and in feminism as well, you know, um, that just because you're a woman, you on average earn less than men, right? <laughs> I have a very jiffable face, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> or do you say jiffable? I, I, I would say jiffable, but I understood you. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's there's so much value in investigating mindsets and saying like, okay, this is how I grew up. I was I was told to not take any space. I was told that to be a woman means to be demure, to be subservient, to mm -hmm. to not be bossy because that's the worst thing that a woman could be. Oh, uh, to be ambitious? What? <clears throat> Side note, I watched a really fascinating video of this channel called Matt Baum, and he talks about the why, why gay people love um, the Disney villains, because the Disney <sighs> villains embody what was not proper of the genders, you know, for a woman to be like the evil queen. Voluptuous. A yeah. voluptuous for one, um, authoritative, commanding, powerful yeah wow. that fascinating i gotta send you the link to that video it's just um yeah i guess because i literally just got chills yeah it's all about not fitting into the box and breaking out of the box that society set and saying mm -hmm. like hey i'm a full fully realized amazing person with things to offer and mm. people you people need to find the coach that they connect with that they resonate with there's so many people out there, but there are people that you could help best because of your shared experiences, shared traumas, whatever. Yeah. Well, and I, yeah, I want to, I want to touch on this because it's something that I really highly believe in as well. Um, whether, okay, well, I'm just going to, I believe in a higher power, right? I believe in the universe. Um, and so when I am connecting with people, for example, they see my offer on a Facebook post and they reach out to me or whatever. Um, before I enter into any kind of conversation about sales with that person, I always take a minute and ask for the highest good for all. And it may not be what I want. Like, okay, I want their money, for example. <laughs> I want to go on a shopping spree, right? And that's kind of my ego driven. But when I pray for this, um, the highest good for all, and then just literally let go of the outcome of that situation. Um, because I've been in situations where, okay, I wasn't quite feeling this person, but I, I took them on as a client anyway. And then it just does exactly what you think it does. It just crashes. Yeah. And uh what you said earlier too about just letting everybody be who they are you know so some people are not on this path that you're on and that's okay you know mm -hmm. some people are and that's that's where you meet and maybe you um maybe it works out you know and that's magical that's that's miraculous but 
um, you really just have to be disconnected from saying, I'm going to push and push and push and push and push and push. See if I can get this person to work with me. It's, yeah. yeah. Because pushing where it's not healthy, I had, I had a thought and it was really good and then it went away. There was, if you're in a high, an empathic person you, and mm. you take on a lot of, of things and you're trying to be the peacemaker and you're trying not to feel like you did and you, you mm. got so numb through the, through the trauma of, of, of the depression, mm. it's like a part of yourself becomes dormant mm. and then really in being yourself and discovering who you are outside of being a mom or outside of any of those other things like that 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 real you can can flourish and you can like learn about yourself and like the world just opens up in a way that it didn't before yeah yeah it's an absolutely beautiful journey and when i you know can accompany somebody on that journey it's like oh okay i understand now why I'm here, you know, mm-hmm. I understand now, um, this thing called life. People get really, really caught in their prisons and think that it's just the way it is and it's the way it's always going to be, but it doesn't have to be that way. It's like, yeah, freedom yeah. is such a theme of my channel. Like I have this other conversation that's really incredible with this lady who got out of an abusive, spiritually and physically, physically abusive mm. marriage. Marriage, marriage. And, yeah. And like it makes me so happy to be able to share those conversations. Like you, there is freedom. It's there not is freedom. If if it's feeling so full of of fear and and hate and and hurt, it's not God. Like you, I can say that beyond a shadow of a doubt. It's mm-hmm. like nobody mm-hmm. has to be man- manipulated to remain in a loveless, hopeless marriage or relationship. Yeah. Well, and to connect like all these little dots that we're having. Oh, thank you. I appreciate <laughs> that. I, I need help with the dot collection. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm my brain. I think we're similar in that aspect. Um, when you're marketing, a lot of people, it sort of parallel it to dating (laughs) because it's sort of like that right first you get to know the person and then when they you know want to hang out sometime and then you then need to explain you know more about who you are and then the the relationship can go further or not and so um if we're not aligned with who we truly are then we get into relationships business or otherwise that are going to make us shut down, are going to make us feel more pain, are going to make us, you know, go through bad things because what, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. You got to listen to your feelings. Like, especially mm-hmm. people going through religious trauma are told like, don't do not trust your heart. It's wicked above all else. All this like twisted out of context crap. And yeah. so people are continually told, don't trust your feelings, but our feelings are the things that tell us we have to, we have intuition. We have, mm. if, if, if something is just completely uncomfortable, completely unsafe, like you need to listen to it. You need to get out of situations. You need to not yeah. work with that person or work with that person. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, um, I don't know if you've ever gone through this or know people who have gone through this and it's so it's like it's just totally parallel between relationships and business relationships where all of a sudden somebody one person when one party really likes the other party and so then they come on really strong and they you know blah 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 blah. and then the other person is recoiling and like whoa this is weird because they don't feel like it's a natural connection you know what I'm saying Mm. yeah yeah so um that's how people can get into or you know feelings of i'm not worthy or i don't you know something like that or maybe i don't deserve any better or feeling guilty for not reciprocating feelings and like well i need to just also need to just do it because i don't want them to be sad yeah Mm -hmm. 
Exactly. Oh, yeah. my heart just so breaks sure. for wanting people to discover their worth and discover that they're not alone. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know. I feel that's... the same way. Exactly. You wouldn't do what you're doing if you didn't care about people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's so much with mindset, you know, there's a lot to go through for most people, but um, a really good way to start is actually, um, we talk a lot about listening to our feelings and listening to our heart, but also really just listening to your body as well. So when I talk about mindset, (laughs) what I really do is actually movement mindset. I say mindset because people understand what that means, but a lot of the work that we do is actually like moving our bodies. And and it's a different way of listening to yourself. It's not dancing per se, you don't have to be like, (laughs) no, but literally just like, "Mm, you know, what am I feeling in this moment and watching, watching what your body does. So that's specifically what I do. I think there's, probably so deep to go into that because we we are spirit and flesh like Mm -hmm. it's all connected and so much of what people hold in their bodies as pain is like unresolved issues baggage Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I always say your business success is equal to your your mindset your mindset is equal to how you feel in your body and so then your how you feel in your body is how you feel in your business or in the, in your entire life in general. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't I want to make myself intimidated by another really long project to edit. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that you'd like to say to to finish things up? Um yeah, are you going to put links or, of my Oh yeah, totally. Link? I'll put any links okay. you want down below. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, if this conversation resonated with you and about growing your business and uh, about doing it through uh, exploring the connection, the physical and mind connection to your business, then totally reach out. And we have what we call a non-obligation coffee chat where we pray for the highest good and we see if we're a good fit. It's like Tinder. <laughs> It's so much of things are like dating though. Like I would really love people to subscribe to this channel because they feel uh-huh. a connection to yes, not just this video, but to be excited to see other ones and to connect with not just me, but the people I'm with and like just to, to show up. So yeah, mm-hmm. you have, it's really right. hard to find a vlogger or podcaster that you just really click with. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. So yeah, so, thank you so much for sharing and being so real and genuine and helping me when I get kind of out there in La La Land. <laughs> I'm out there in La La Land like 90% of the time, so. <laughs> fun. <laughs> La La Land is fun. <laughs> thank you, Katie, so much. Thanks. So. Bye. The way that I end my conversations is, moving my bottle out of the way so that I don't knock it over, I give hugs. Oh. (laughs) What an inspirational lady, I love it. If you reach out to her and end up connecting, I'd love to hear about that. The idea of building bridges and helping people connect with who they are meant to connect with just makes me so happy. So yeah, let's share our stories. Hope to hear from you in the comments. Bye.